We have an exciting day today. I am even more excited to introduce you to Dana Blair. She is the founder of an amazing company called Patinku. It is a yarn-based company that uses sustainable, all-natural, plant-based dyes. So let's go meet her. are doing something unique in a very unique place that we embrace for what it is. I want the girls to shine Aww. and I want the product to shine That's and nice. I'd like to be a mover and shaker behind it. What brings you the most joy every day? On our yarn tags. It says the dye plant, it says the name of the colorway, but it also says dyed by Angela Santusa and Leonardo. My name's not on there because I, again, I'm a facilitator. It's them and I wanted them to have the recognition. So I showed them the tags and Leonardo cried. We're here with Dana Blair from Pika. Yeah, Pika. Maybe I should do it as well. Maybe I should Pokemon. do that again. Pitinku. Mm -hmm. That's really cute. It means actually. little bird in in Quechua. The inspiration for Pitinku was, what can we make that will be a yes as opposed to a no? What would clients say yes to that would make a sustainable income for you while preserving these techniques? So it wasn't going to be the full picture, which is a textbook. Yeah. The full process of raising the animal, of dyeing the yarn, of spinning it, of weaving it, that wasn't going to, that wasn't the yes. Mm -hmm. Taking a piece of that, which for me was natural dyeing, could, like that was a really potentially profitable opportunity for mm -hmm. all of us. You know, I was able to do work that I enjoyed. They were able to continue doing work that they've always done. And we made a, pro a product that people are really interested in. I want to know more mm -hmm. about the the cultural um, dyeing process here in Peru. Natural dyeing is a process that has been practiced not only in the Andes but throughout Peru for thousands of years. It's not a standardized practice, but natural dyeing again was done mostly for for textiles. Mm. So I want to modernize and make things uh, more streamlined, more standardized. But I don't want to change it completely because then really what would yeah, it what would it conflicts with the identity of the company to do that? And then it wouldn't be so much an art form, exactly. And that we source all the materials locally, so we do work by season. Uh, we're able to work outside of season to a certain extent, depending on the material. Okay. But otherwise, we harvest from the mountains and valleys that are surrounding our workshop. Okay, that that is so cool that you're just like. I just got this plant from. The, the mountain, and now I'm going to be dying with it. Well, mostly that Santisa <laughs> climbed the mountain with a pick in her hand and got it off the oh, side. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Some are more accessible, but others that we collect them from the mountains. We do outsource the yarn that it would come from Arequipa to our workshop, but everything else there is done within this region. The, awesome. the women are from the region, the plants are from this region, that you know, we, we source, we try to keep it as local as possible. So it really is a Peruvian product. Mm. Just the small details that there's an American running the company. <laughs> I'm Peruvian at heart. <laughs> but then getting into the local plants that you can only you can only find in this it, a beautifully rich environment mm. that we live in. So there's a root that's called chapi and it makes salmony pink. Whoa. Beautiful, beautiful pink. There's another too, there's one called Quince Cucho. Uh, the plant is green, but when it's infected with a certain fungus and the plant is turning black, they call it a canca. So when the plant is, is, is dying, essentially, that's what will die. Oh, okay. But the plant itself, it's, it's healthy and it, it's, you can find it just growing in a healthy environment. It doesn't have the canca. It makes like a green, like very planty. Okay, so right. if you want this specific color, you have to go find this plant that has a fungus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's turning black. Okay. And, then, and then you dry it and then you crush it up and, and you put it into the pot. It makes this beautiful turquoisey green color. See, that is amazing for me. And, and a lot of people don't know that, that dyes like, need a specific environment and Absolutely. need a specific like, 
mordant that goes with it. And there's- Or lack of. Yeah, or lack of. What are the types of plants and mordants that you would be using? The mordants that we use are pretty, pretty common. Uh, a copper sulfate uh, that's locally collected, alum, uh, citric acid, uh, the dye plants too, there are some that are that are recognizable internationally. Uh, Cochineal is, is well known. Uh, Tara Espinosa as well. How we work with black walnut here at the workshop is that you first, you boil down the plant, uh, the leaves, the fruit, and a bit of the branches, mostly the twigs, in the pot. Then uh, separate the water and the plant, put the water or the, the yarn into the water, and then after boiling it, you'll actually take it out, putting it, put it into a sealed bag and let the vapor, like the steam from the black walnut is strong enough that it darkens the color within the bag. Wow. Darker than you would get if you just boiled it. I didn't know that before. So where do you learn all your techniques? Like just experimenting. Experimenting. Patience. Yeah. Experimenting the girls with, as well. the, with the community. One of the main differentiating factors of Pichinko as well is that one, the girls are not artisan partners, but they're family. Okay. The girls are family and we know each other very well. We work together as colleagues and they have a lot of knowledge that they bring to the table, but I do as well. So it's very much a collaboration. Their traditional mm. knowledge, what they've learned from, from practicing for many years, that's the base. But we've really built up that base a lot and it's not because we've read anything, because we've studied, because we followed a recipe, because we tried it enough times that we got it right. Wow. Clients that are interested in working with a business like Pichinku, which is artisan, which is handmade, human made, it's stepping That's away. That's a good point right there. It's a mutual responsibility to step away from what we've been programmed to expect mm. and to embrace that it's a variable process that flexibility is key in being able to make something special and to differentiate from the industrial. Yeah. Industrial is great. Have high expectations. Make those factories do exactly what you want them to yes. do. But if you want something with heart, something made with a lot of love and appreciation for the process, we need to be more patient. We need to be more open-minded. I think so. Because it's made with, with your heart and soul. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you. <laughs> it was a pleasure.